Hey people, it's me again. So, anyways, um, I'm just uh, resting here as far as that goes, you know. And uh, one of my previous videos that I recorded and made a bit of a flub at that point, you know, when it came to like the U.S. Uh, set an election here in California, and the uh, apparent like front runner that could possibly uh, succeed Feinstein after now that Feinstein has decided to retire, you know, <laughs> is uh, Congresswoman Katie Porter, you know, and at one point I think I got her mixed up with Katie Hill because Katie Hill is another. Democrat congresswoman there, but it was in another county over in like an LA county somewhere. Yeah. But it's kind of like probably around like the whole um, Lancaster, Palmdale area as far as where the district is. Uh, not exactly certain. And that was the one where uh, Jane Ugar tried to run for Congress and, and then he lost to Katie Hill. Yeah. So that was one of the things there. And I think, if I remember correctly, I don't know if she won re election there or lost re election or something like that. I don't, I don't remember the exact story because it was that one district in particular. It's kind of a, a purple district. So in the past, it would have been like a couple of Republicans. And maybe very few Democrats, you know, but it's kind of like where I live as far as the district there because originally, you know, it was mainly like a Republican district for where I lived for quite a while. And it wasn't until like the 2018 midterm election when um, Harley Ruda had, had ousted uh, Roa Bacher and then. He ended up getting ousted by Michelle Steele. And then it went to, like, Mark Levine, I think that's his name. You know, who became the new uh, local congressman here, as far as that goes. So, that's just one of the little things there. You know what I mean? And, um... As far as, like, the other thing that I was going to talk about, that's going to be, like, another video altogether. But it was one of the things that uh, someone had pointed out to me as far as when it comes to Nikki Haley, you know, that Nikki Haley is more like a Republican version of Harris, you know, and in a way that I had mentioned that she's more of a, tier two candidate where she's not going to be good enough to be a front runner in the presidential elections, but she'll be like good enough to be uh, somebody's running mate, you know, which could perfectly be like Ron DeSantis if Ron DeSantis becomes the running mate. I mean, becomes the front runner as far as that goes. And, and I kind of think it... it that that is still like within a possibility depending on how much um the establishment uh republicans throw uh throw trump under the bus as far as that goes and it was like mainly the whole reasoning of why um trump had lost in 2020 was because the Republicans, of course, were just sick of his antics and all of that. And just, they just want him to be just another uh, establishment-type Republican and repeat the same old, same old Republican um, talking points and policies and whatnot. But then he had kind of gone and... Uh, gone gone rogue and and that was pretty much the whole thing there you know what i mean 
And I think that's just probably where we're heading in in this sort of direction, you know, that the the fight for control of the the GOP, which would be, you know, the MAGA slash populist people versus the establishment types, you know. And it's like the same thing when it comes to the Democrats there, you know, establishment versus populism, you know. But I don't know who's going to win out in the end, so we'll just wait and see. So anyways, talk to you guys later.